Welcome viewers of High School Life. Today on Know Your History, we are live at Bonre Kente Museum. We are here to talk about the origin of Kente in collaboration with Countryside and 2AJT. Stay tuned. Hello, welcome viewers of High School Life. I'm Mikia and just like I said earlier, today we are born near Kente Museum to talk about the origin of Kente. I'm here with Nana Kwesi Asari. Hi. Hi. All right. So Nana Kwesi, Bonre is so, known as the home of Kente. Why so, is that? Oh, okay. Bonre is being notified as the home of Kente because Bonre is the grassroots of Kente. Yes. The genesis about the Kente weaving all started from here. Okay. Uh, I don't know uh, how old you are now, but I cannot ask you. <laughs> you know, some the people of us who are read from uh, back in the primary four, primary five, uh, realized that there was some portion where it has been captured as the Kente weaving at Bumi. So across the globe, across Ghana, across Africa, everywhere, we all know that uh, Bumi is Kente and Kente so is Bumi. Bumi. All right. So how did we even get the name Kente? Uh, the, the name Kente uh, is a corrupt version of the word Kente. That's yeah. a key word, Kente. Uh, the meaning of Kenten, that's the English term for Kenten, is the basket weaving. Okay. Yeah, so uh, after a series of experiments, and we people of the Bonwe realized that the surface of the weaving was similar to that of a basket weaving. So they named the cloth a basket weaving cloth. Okay. Kenten and Nunantum. Mm -hmm. So Kenten is the basket, and the weaving cloth added to it. So Kenten and Nunantum, then later it was being corrupted to become Kente weaving. Okay, so Kente was known to be worn by royalties, right? Sure. So sure. How, now it's very common. Mm -hmm. Are there some specific clothes that can be worn by any individual? Oh, okay. Uh, there are some specific clothes. I would say there are some specific clothes that are being not allowed to use by uh, any ordinary individual. But that one too has a clause. Okay. That's when His Royal Majesty is on a dead background using the same pattern. Okay. Yeah. We have seven family member group in Bumye here that designs Utum for Kente. Okay. So when it's come to a Deba or any occasions and they present that pattern to him, okay. it's been disallowed or it's not been allowed by any individual to use it at the same Deba grounds. That's only where people cannot use it. But aside that, you know, when it is being publicized, everyone can order for it and use it without being facing any interruptions. So who was the first person to wear Kente? The first person to wear Kente? Okay, that's Opoku Kregu and Kwachia mm -hmm. These are the Kente Hines family. Uh -huh. These are the men who discover the ways and the manner a spider weave it with. Mm -hmm. But people only know about the Kente Hine who discover the ways and the manner a spider weave, weave it with. But there are also some companies, there are some people who also help in making the weaving uh, into this uh, state now. So we have the Puku Kregu and the Kwachia okay. These are the people who discover the ways and the manner a spider weave it with. Then we have another man by name, uh, Nana Wata Krabain. Nana Wata Krabain also invented colors, that are the primary colors into Kente weaving. Okay. Then we have Nana Wasei Kufu who also uh, invented geometric designs into Kente weaving. Mm -hmm. So Nana Krogu and Nana uh, Poku Krogu and Kwacha Miyao, these were the first people who wore Kente in the country or in the whole world. Okay, so every Kente you see around has a different pattern. Do those patterns have meaning? Sure, every pattern you see in the Kente industry means something culturally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, the reason behind it is that some of the patterns were created based on the circumstance okay. and most of them too also has uh, the similarities of some animals okay. you know back in the olden times you see the africans they were more close to animals animals yes. were their friends so we have some pattern that has been named as at the back of a tortoise so when you see that pattern you can easily identify how the back of a tortoise looks like it's not only that but a whole lot of animals 
that had been created in the similarities of these patterns. So this is how we used to create a pattern. So we say KNT is full of history and philosophy. Every pattern means something culturally in the Ashanti culture. All right. So right from here, uh, we will be moving outside. Then you see how we do the weaving. Uh, I think from there you can easily identify how these patterns will came about and right. how the patterns, like I said, some of the patterns look like some animals and other things. You can easily identify from them. All right, thank you. You're welcome. Hello. Please, how is Kinte uh, Okay, when you ask how Kinte is being done, you know, it passes through many processes. Yes. You know, Kinte is not only seen in the loom weaving as you see over here. There are processes it passes through before you come to the loom weaving. So, uh, looking at my brother here, he is doing the bobbin winding. Mm -hmm. So, over here, he will be rolling the strings on the bobbin. So, this is one of the first processes of the Kinte weaving. Right. So after the bobbin winding, we have what you call as warping method. Mm -hmm. That one too is the processes of obtaining the background. Then we have what you call as settings. So after all these processes being put together, then we come to the loom weaving. So let's first observe how we do the bobbin winding and after we can get into the loom for the other uh, aspects. So uh, let's say this is the basis of the weaving. Okay. This is where we do the weaving. And like I said, uh, kente is a traditionally handmade material. Yes. Everything about the weaving is by hand. They okay. are all traditionally made. Oh. There's no machine work applies to the weaving. So what you see here is the horizontal wooden loom or the wooden thread. Okay. Although kente never started in the loom weaving as you see here, yeah. we also have what you call as the evolutions or the stages of the kente weaving. Okay. You know, before it was done in a small way, uh, before it was being transferred to the loom weaving. So what you have here is the horizontal wooden loom. That's the machine for every weaver. And inside the loom, we have different kinds of materials yeah, that forms see. play in the weaving processes. All right. All right. So what you see here on top of the loom, we call this one the pulley bars. The pulley bars. We call we call it pulley bars. In the chi word, we say inyinaso, okay. inyinaso. And when you come here, we call this one pulley, pulley. And I uh, can say vidie. And inside the pulley, you see this small thing here, we call it fanges. And this one is called Widiba. Okay. Widiba. Then let's come here, we call this one the headers or the net. Okay. The headers on the net. And the key word is uh, Asa. Asa for the key word. Then Will we these have, form part of the. These clock? all forms part after I will explain the functions it plays. Okay. We call this one the beta or the read. We call this one Shreya in the key word. Then we have here the header rams or the paddle. Okay. They can't say ntiemu. Ntiemu. Then you see here, we call this one the rolling bar. Mm. The rolling bar. Uh, you see uh, uh, ayasidia. Yeah. Ayasidia. Alright. Okay, so let's see the functions these materials play here. Oh, I've already uh, explained the shuttle and the bobbin here. Yes. Okay. So the functions of the uh the pulley and the nets and the fringes is that and also the head of rams here is that it helps in creating species in the crot so you see when i step on the head of rams yeah. it opens the crot here so it creates space in the crot and whenever you see the space what you do is that you pass your shuttle through it then you stamp with the bitter or the reed Okay. So this is the stamping beater. Uh -huh. This one is used to beat the crotch. Alright. Uh -huh. Alright. Then we have the pulley bars. The pulley bars in the weaving act like GS to the weaving. Okay. Alright. Always the, the the reed or the beater, you see the down of it needs to beat the crotch. Yeah. Needs to stamp the crotch. So whenever you see the middle beating the crotch, 
what you do is that you push the pulley bars upwards. Okay. So if you also want it, you see this time, it cannot be too slow. Yes. So what you do is that you push the pulley bars down. You bring it down, then it helps in beating it nicely. Okay. Okay. All right, then let's come to the weaving as a whole. In the weaving tool, we have three main types of weaving. We have what you call like the single, the double, and the triple. Oh. When you say the single, that's the plain weaving with no designs. We don't make any designs in it. It's mostly referred to us as a background design. When I say background, this is the background of the cloth I am making here. Okay. Every kente has its own background. Right. It could be yellow, red, mauve, depending on the pattern you are making or the color you are using. So looking around here, you can see different background being stretched across the place. Yeah. yeah, that's it. All right, so the single weave is a plain weave. We don't make any design. Then the double weave has a design, but you first program the design. Program. You program the design. You arrange the design on top of the mesh or the oh. background before you start weaving. Then we have the triple weave, which has been classified as the most complicated one. Because the most work in the triple weave is done by the hand or the fingers. Compared to the single and the double, you need the assistance of the shuttle weave. Mm -hmm. Alright, so let me practice uh, on the single weave. Uh, the pattern he is up to do is a single weave, it's a plain weave. Single so weave. let me do how, how, how they make it. Alright, so like I said, when you step down the heddle ramps, it opens the cloth for you to pass your shuttle to it. Then you stamp with the beater. So you come to the other side, the same thing, you stamp. You have to beat it every time you pass the shuttle. Yeah, through. every time you pass it through, you have to beat it. What happens if you don't? Pardon me? What happens if you don't? If you don't beat it, you know, you want your cloth to be very nice, yeah. very firm. Uh -huh. So you have to beat it so that the string will position very well. Okay. Alright. So you so see this here, is I'm not making, yeah, I'm not doing any design, so yeah. Mm -hmm. What you need is to just concentrate on the weaving. What happens if you make a mistake and then you want to reverse? In the single weave, the only time you can make a mistake is that. All right, let's watch my uh, hand and the foot. Okay. All right, when wherever you see the bit, uh, the shuttle, it has to match it with the foot. Right. So. Now that the shuttle is on my left, what I do is that I step on the left foot, mm -hmm. I lose the right one. Mm -hmm. So this is how it goes, then you stamp. But let's uh, say mistakenly, instead of now the shuttle is on the right, instead of using the right foot, I mistakenly use the left, left one. Let, you just watch and see what happens here. Okay. Oh. Did you see that? Yes. Mm -hmm. So this is how it will go. Then it yeah. means you retrieve the string from, mm. from the floor. Yeah. So it has to match it. The foot and the hand has to match. Yeah. Right, right, left, left right, to left. left. Alright, so this is the triple weaving method. Sure, sure. Uh, this is one of the triple weave patterns in the Kente weaving. And like I said, the triple weave is the most complicated one. Yeah. And uh, I, I can see you, you have to witness it yourself. Yes. Over here, the most work is done by the hand or the fingers. Okay. Unlike the single and the double, you see the shuttle doing the most work over there. Okay. And these ones also come with more intricate of patterns compared to the double weave. You know, in the double weave, uh, it looks much easy because the pattern has been programmed ahead of you. Okay. You know, so you have something to look upon. You have a step ahead of you. Right. But over here, whatever you're doing is in the mind. Yeah. So while you're weaving, you still need to communicate with the mind.
so this is also one of the triple weave patterns. Yeah. And the triple weave, it comes with different motifs. Uh -huh. It has different motifs. So when you go to the showroom, you see different types over there. All right, so the name for this particular pattern is, uh, you can say Sika Frame Moja. Sika Frame Moja. Okay. Uh, money comes with blood. It causes blood. Right. Uh -huh. You know, you know, you see success is not achieved on a silver platter. Yes. So when you see some people making good use of their money, spoiling it, spending it, you see it comes with a, 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 a whole lot of uh, stuff, yeah. a whole lot of issues. It can either be you work hard for it or you pass the other way for it. Whatever yeah. it is, it is still not easy to make money. Yes. Uh -huh, that's it. And this is one of the most oldest patterns in the Kente industry. Okay. By looking at how the colors were being uh, combined, you can see it. And like I said, every pattern in the Kente has a meaning. So from here to here, we call it Babadia. Babadia. Yeah. Okay. Babadia. When you say Babadia, Babadia refers to our strength. You know, there are some plants in the forest when our parents give birth to the younger ones, uh, they will be cutting the branches and they leave, they soak it into water and use the water to bath the younger ones. Okay. The idea behind is that when they grow up, uh, they will not be attacked by sicknesses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's some kind of protection. Okay. That thing. Then we have what we call as a motua from here to here. Okay. We call it a motua. And motua means I've offended you. But I cannot come down with you to see if I apologize. So I just consult my old daddy here. Daddy intervene on my behalf to seek for an apology. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's the uh, motua. So when you come okay. to the Asante Empire here, we have whom we refer to us as the Jatua okay. That's the intermediate chief. Yeah. Uh, so he resolves issues between two parties, conflict okay. and other stuff. Then here, we call this one Ahmene Pankasa. Ahmene Pankasa. Mm -hmm. You see the quality bees, they, don't, they does not make noise. Okay. Ahmene Pankasa. Yeah, so you see, every kente has a name and a culture meaning to it. Okay. So the patterns are not just being created for just uh, the use of the beauty or something. Okay. So everything we have seen here today looks like a thin thread, right? Mm -hmm. So how is it combined to make a full thick cloth? Okay. Everything is made on strips like this. Yes. We are all made on strips. And after we stick them together, we join them together. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you put them into pieces then you join them. Mm -hmm. That's how it's been done. Okay. So you've been in the Kinte weaving industry for so long, right? Yeah. What do you think that the government or what do you think is to be done to improve or put Kinte out there? Mm, okay, you know uh, <laughs> every Kinte weaver is uh, dreaming of getting a yarn factory. All right. You know, uh, the most difficult aspect in the weaving is the yarns. Uh -huh. And Kente being in existence over 300 years, and we still don't have uh, a factory that produces the yarns. And as I'm speaking today, we still import yarns oh. from uh, outside, you know, uh, a signal. Right. So what we need most is the yarn factory. Also, we need a Kente hub, like a Kente village, as you see here. You can, you can see different uh, stores in different yeah. places. Look at those people uh, uh, doing the weaving outside. Of. You know, it, it's not it, it's not attractive at all. Mm -hmm. When it rains, it, you just have oh, to stop the, working. Yeah. So you need the places like that, and also maybe some capital to push the weavers. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need a lot, and moreover, a patent right for the kente, a okay. patent right. Kente does not have a patent right, so the Chinese can set his own place and. You know, still our pattern that yeah. we think it is valuable, it is priceless, and you will do a printed version of it and okay. come to the the same uh, country and sell it. So you see, is our country being serious? No. no. And what is the government doing about it? No. I mean, being here, <laughs> I cannot protect it. No. We have been trying our best to protect it, but it's not up to here. So okay. we need the authority to, you know, come in the aid. Alright, so Kinte is known as a very expensive cloth. Mm -hmm. Why do you, what makes Kinte so expensive? Uh, first I would say is the yarns. 
when the yarn become expensive, the weaving become expensive. Yeah. Uh -huh. So uh, that's why I was uh, requesting for the yarn factory. Okay. Uh -huh. And you know the work is also very tedious. You know it comes with a lot of work. People don't know. People think that when I order you a coat today, you need to deliver it the next day or the next week. There are clothes that will take you like eight months to a year yeah. to complete. Yeah, that pattern we just visited. The, the assassin clothes. Uh -huh. yeah. That one will take you like eight months to a year to complete a full coat. So imagine how long you are going to do with this one wow. and how much you are putting into it. And after, you gain nothing. Right. And these ones you take like three months to complete it. So, Kente, no, it's not all that expensive. Kente does not deserve the prices it's supposed to be. Mm, it does not. Looking at the time spent on it and the yarns you consume, you're supposed to have charged more. You know, when you travel outside Ghana, eh, things that are made by hand, the yeah. handmade materials are very expensive. It's only in Ghana and maybe some parts of Africa that are handmade goods are not being valued. But when you go to Europe and other uh, countries, the handmade materials, I tell you, very, very expensive. You cannot buy it. Okay, so Nana, sir, is there anything that you would like to add? Uh, for now, uh, uh, let's get to the showroom and right. see the variety of the patterns over there. Right. for staying tuned on High School Life Know Your History. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click on the notification bell. Like, comment and share. My name is Akiana Sabrina. Stay tuned.